Hey guys, this is Glenn Scope. I'm coming to you downtown of Vancouver, June 27th, 2020. I'm going to talk to some people about the order and council, uh, just like I did a couple of weeks ago, hopefully with a slightly better camera quality, uh, some better equipped tools, and uh, we'll see if people care about their rights. So there's about 150 people signed up for this particular protest to talk about their rights, show their support to can other Canadians what is actually going on and how they can protect their rights. A good website to check out is firearmsrights.ca. If you want to donate to the CCFR, that's what my hat is. And uh, all right, well, let's get to it. Uh, if you have anything to say, uh, what are what are your thoughts on the May 1st gun ban? I think it's terrible. Uh, well, that's the, in the word, yes. Because it takes away resources from from dealing with from the, uh, from the police, and also it's totally misguided because it's going after against law-abiding citizens, you know, that have legal guns. So, you know, why is this? Why why are we dealing with like criminals and like organized gangs that are actually smuggling guns across the border instead? You know, instead of this. So Bill Blair, Bill Blair yeah. also said that this ban would have stopped the Nova Scotia shooter, but the Nova Scotia shooter used illegal guns. What yep. do you think about that? Um, I think he's lying. It's just you know, not a proof yet because ban it's also illegal for him to bring illegal guns from the states, which is you know that's another ban that got violated. You know, and there's a half a dozen more bans he violated. So you know, I don't think this gun ban would have done anything. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And especially since you know you start hearing the stories if you dig into it, like the guy was. The, the police knew about his fake police cruiser and his uniform, and that he actually may have been uh, working as a, um, an informant for the police too. So now it becomes a whole crazy situation that, you know, the police overlooked this because he was an organized crime asset, you know? So, so how could a ban stop any of that, you know? Number one, the gun ban's undemocratic, right? I mean, like it was, uh, it was just issued by pretty much our prime minister. It didn't go through the proper channels because he knows he's not gonna get the support for it. So um, it's, it's not even correct to do it that way when we live in a democracy. Yeah, there was no debate, right? There's no debate. It was, yeah, and he's using the uh, emotional weight of the situation in Nova Scotia to push this gun ban through. And there's no connection between the shooter in Nova Scotia with any legal firearms owner because anyone that has a legal license knows the uh, hoops that we have to jump through in order to get one. Do you uh, think it's easier or harder to get a legal gun than an, an, an illegal gun? Oh, it's way harder to get a legal gun. First off, you have to get your license, you have to pass your tests, right? And then even when you purchase it, you have to wait for it to clear through the uh, RCMP before you can even take it home. So, I mean, like, the to, whereas if you're going to purchase it illegally, I'm sure there's ways to find it. Gangs always have it, and it's not really hard to find one if you really want one, right? Um, where I live, my neighbor, um, he chased off a uh, guy who broke into his house. It was a, he was a homeless fellow, but the police caught up to him, and he had a firearm on him. And the police said, you're lucky you didn't catch this guy. This guy's not a legal owner of it, yet he are, he's homeless, and he has a firearm. So that's how easy it is to get it. So if, if homeless people can acquire firearms mm -hmm. illegally, then what are what are laws going to do, right? Exactly. Because even if you pass the law that says, OK, ban it, um, these are criminals. They don't follow the law to begin with. They're not going to all of a sudden say, oh, it's illegal. Let me quickly turn it in. They're not going to. Right. The only different the only thing you're doing is punishing Canadian citizens who did the right thing and are law abiding with this law there is no purpose for it it's a waste of money mm -hmm. and at the end of the day looking at the situation we are how, where is this government going to get the billions to do this buyback that they so-called calling it it's not buyback anyways because you're just seizing property of legal canadians so yeah no the gun ban is not going to work it's it's just a uh, a way for the liberals to fill their campaign promise and that's it it's a political move what are your thoughts on the Order and Council gun ban on May 1st? Uh, it's completely undemocratic the way it went down. You know, it didn't even see it. It's fair fight in Parliament um, and they use the pandemic as an excuse. 
uh, to push it through. And that's just because we're one of the founding members of UN and they're, they want to push the Agenda 21 to disarm all citizens of participating countries, right? Do you feel this gun ban makes Canadians safer? Absolutely not. Uh, Canadian farm owners are the safest members of our community. You know, we're vetted every day, every morning we get a criminal background check. Who else has that? You know, and if there's any kind of red flag that pops up, you're getting a call from the CFO and potentially a visit, right? Depending on the situation. Do you feel that there was not enough time to sort of analyze what happened with the Nova Nova Scotia shooter, especially now we're a couple of months later and a lot more information has come out, like he may have been a, a police informant, he was paid off of almost $500,000. Yeah, it's really shady. Like we're not, the whole case is sealed up and any information that that is has comes out is because the media basically has to sue to, to get it at this current at this point in time um, and they're just using it as a knee-jerk reaction to to push this through but the fact is that there was one domestically sourced firearm that that the guy acquired and that was from the slain police officer that he shot um, he wasn't even allowed to have guns because of previous violent incidences that happened you know, in his life. And um, just so happens that it was only the the law-abiding gun owners um, that happened to not get shot because they warned him, hey, we're, we're armed when he came to their door and then he went somewhere else. What would you like to tell other Canadians and, you know, possibly, you know, what, you know, if, if they're looking for safety, where should they be looking for it? Well, that's, that's something that I believe is up to every Canadian citizen and it should be our freedom to, to choose. If, if, if we are go through the proper channels of getting a, a firearm license and, and screening, it, it should be our right to decide whether, you know, we, we get to protect our family, you know, and, and, and children. And, um, and if you choose that you don't want to do that, well, that's that's great. That's your choice. You can call the police, which we do anyways. But unfortunately, even in a city like Vancouver, uh, the the response time for a, a tier one call is uh, slightly under 10 minutes. And um, when you have somebody, you know, breaking into your house, uh, a lot can happen in that time. And so unfortunately, by the time they come, they're they're basically it's it's only become an investigation and now they're they're pursuing the suspects uh and you know the, there's no no better time than the present to to take action and and uh minimize risk you know and uh, and it, like i said uh, it's not the legal firearm owners that that we have to worry about in, in canada the statistics prove that and our media is just creating fear by by the events that happen in, in the USA and we have knee-jerk reactions to, to all of that right then then the liberal liberal government basically came out and said we're gonna ban these weapons but the ban wouldn't have affected these smuggled weapons from the USA right he didn't have a license and they were already smuggled so basically I'm just looking for comments on like do you think that is the correct way to respond to this particular um, issue is to ban weapons which are legal and in the hands of RCMP vetted owners or should there be more to be done for like to counter smuggling sure. or crime or I think it's all about honestly it's all about education we come we're from Mexico we okay. live here mm -hmm. we're from Mexico so you can so you can imagine what what types of problems and what kinds of problems we face with violence and stuff. And I think, like, at least for myself, like my own point of view, um, we got killings and shootings and everything there, and it's all about education. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds cliche, but honestly, I think people need to understand that. Yeah, it's 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 not. It's not the right way. You can ban guns, you can ban weapons, you can ban everything, but people will keep on going. And 
Well, I think we'll really need to educate people. May 1st. Do you have any comments on that? Not really. I'm not into guns. Well, that's well, that's fine. Are you aware that they banned all these guns? Yep. Do you think it's good or bad? Or Personally, I think people shouldn't be carrying firearms. I mean, that's a that's a very, very good good thing not to do, especially if, you know, guns are guns are pretty dangerous. But that's, uh, you know, everybody has their own opinion, their own idea of what's right and wrong, so. Mm. I mean, the whole reason why they banned the guns on May 1st was to, you know, because of the Nova, Nova Scotia shooter, right? Mm. But the people have brought up uh, interesting questions about the Nova, Nova Scotia shooter, the fact that he had four illegal weapons and he didn't have a gun license. So if you institute more laws that the guy didn't follow, it wouldn't actually stop anything. Probably not, but you're always going to have an illegal market out there for anything that's in demand, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had they had issues with homeless homeless people in Oppen, Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer Park, and they were finding illegal weapons in homeless camps. So, I mean, if homeless people can get guns, <laughs> what oh. is more lots going to do? Uh, I'm wondering how guns are getting in unregistered. Well, it, it probably has something to do with we share the largest undefended border with the country which has the most guns in the world. And, uh, you know... No, you know, I, I get all that, but yeah. I'm saying um, as far as Canada is concerned, we're... Uh, needing to find a way to put a stop to getting all those illegal guns in here. Mm. So, do you think that more legislation would be effective? In, in so far as what? More as in like... For... So, the guns that are coming across the border are already illegal, right? There's already laws that cover those. So, if we pass more laws, like it, like... The issue is the police, you know, if they find, find an illegal gun, they can they can you know charge charge a person right mm -hmm. so the issue is not lack of laws in being able to charge people which are committing crimes if you make more laws then you know you're sort of doing double work for yourself like the things are already prohibited like why make I more say, laws everybody has an opinion on that we're sadly under uh, you know the US has a different set of rules as far as getting guns and sadly, we're right next door to them, and I think, you know, we're going to have to find better ways of dealing with that as all, well. mm. be it laws or border crossings or whatever. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm asking people what they think about the May 1st liberal gun ban. Do you have any comment on that? Are you aware it happened? Uh, no. No, I'm, I'm, I don't know. You don't know? No. Are, are you aware it happened? It, it would happen right after the Nova Nova Scotia mass shooting. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, the Nova Nova Scotia mass shooting shoot, uh, shooting happened April eighteenth, nineteenth, because it took like thirteen hours. Yeah. And then ten days later, the Liberals banned like assault style weapons, like the AR fifteen. Yeah. So what that did is it basically made a bunch of sporting, you know, semi automatics like prohibited. Right. Obviously, that would be a good thing if that would stop mass shootings. But it came out like later that the mass shooter wasn't a licensed gun owner. And also he acquired his weapons illegally smuggled from the USA. So do you think that would matter at all? In terms like, like, would this leg legislation, you know, m make anyone safer? Do you feel like that's a that's a good method to go? Well, I think it helps. I mean, Canada I don't does know share the. That's 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 no problem. Canada does share the longest undefended bordering with the USA, obviously in the world. Yeah. Um, and obviously, the most guns in the world in one country is the USA. So, like, they're like it's very easy to get illegal guns. Like, there are homeless people with guns <laughs> in Canada, and that's not legal because you have to have an actual address. Yeah, I'm totally against guns. Mm -hmm. I think it's like. US is uh, 
like a superpower country shouldn't have guns at all but we can't control that obviously it's mm-hmm. a different government and everything so mm-hmm. the only thing probably canada can do it's just have more controls on the border mm. uh, because yeah that's the only thing really that they can do there's nothing else really like uh, obviously they they guns are not allowed here which is good but other than that what can you do to prevent it mm. other than controlling what's what's coming in right right but if there's already illegal weapons here then what do you expect it to like if someone who follows follows you know they follow follow the rules uh they get rcmp background check every day yeah and then someone gets an illegal gun and sort of goes around that method then what are what are canadians supposed to do if someone just doesn't doesn't follow follow the rules well you should punish them obviously right it's uh but it's the same thing as like smuggling drugs and things like that obviously it's 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 a crime to to have them so mm. you should you should punish them well i mean for example canada made marijuana legal right a couple, yeah but that's a little a couple... different than having a gun or uh, or having uh, i don't know correct but if you look at the legal marijuana sales in canada they're still being dwarfed by the illegal sales of marijuana right there are still way more illegal sales of marijuana. Well, yeah, I was reading about that. I think it's also because uh, when I first arrived to Canada, there were like, um, how do you call them? With dispenser everywhere. Mm-hmm. But since they regularized the thing, the wheat that you find in, in these new places, that it's a little bit more expensive. So people tend to buy it cheap. <laughs> yeah, on, a, little, a little cheaper. Uh, yeah, but... Um, I, I don't know what you're asking me here. Like, oh, basically, okay, so if the government can't, you know, they made weed legal because they couldn't deal with it, right? Yeah. Let, let's... Sure. So they they made weed legal because they're like, we can't control it. It's really, really not that really not that dangerous. We'll just make it legal. And also, we can get tax tax money for it. Yeah. Well, they made it legal. They're still not getting tax tax money for it. And really, nothing nothing actually changed. Uh, I don't, I don't, I, I don't agree with where you're heading. I don't think they should be legal here. Mm-hmm. I don't think they should be legal. I, 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 I already think they shouldn't be legal in US neither. So I don't, I, I am, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not pro guns. No. Okay. That's, like, uh, nope. even the, the, yeah, I keep seeing like, yeah, it's for self-defense and whatever, but there's too many people that don't actually interpret it that way. And then you find the mad person that does, you know, mass killings and stuff like that. And there's no way to control it. Like in America, it happens all the time. Mm-hmm. While, and if you do that here, it would be the same. I'm also from Europe and mm. like from there, they are not Actually, allowed. Actually, I, uh, I have an interesting uh, point. So uh, France is currently having a major issues with gangs in France having fully automatic weapons just roving around the street like yeah. open open you know in, in you know in you know they're 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 shooting at people and again these guns are illegal in france france is some of the strictest gun gun control methods in the in europe and in, in the world but they're still able to get these illegal weapons yeah but if you if people wants to get something there's always a way to get it right right yeah, but once you have them, like it's a little bit more difficult to control it. Like mm-hmm. once everybody has the possibility to get them, uh, the number, the number of ch- the number of people that can get them would just increase, and then it will be very difficult to control mm-hmm. how those things are used mm-hmm. because you are always going to have the mad person. That maybe right now it would have more difficulties to find them because he needs to go in the street and look for it and, and get mm-hmm. them illegally and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Well, if you just go to a shop and get it, so like the first crazy person that had a mad day or something, you just mm-hmm. take them and then you know what happens. So no, I, I totally well, disagree with that. Well, in Canada, it's a little bit different because you need to go to a safety course for 16 hours. And then after that, you need to have two character references that can be family. And then you need to have a background check by the RCMP. 
Okay. And then that whole process takes between two to six months before you can even get your license, let alone actually walking into a, into a gun store and actually acquiring a firearm. Okay. So in Canada, it's a little bit different. So with all that being being done, like having character character references, background checks, saying saying you aren't a aren't a aren't a criminal, um, would that would that be sufficient? I am. Like, I think I'm the wrong person to talk to because I'm totally against I'm, guns. I'm, I'm looking for all, all aspects, basically. I'm totally against guns. I think only authorities should have them. Uh, but no, hmm. no, I like, even if you, if you have the six months period trial, whatever you want to call it, there's always, no, not every mad person is mad initially. They can snap after. Mm. <laughs> so that's a that's a very very good point. Uh, so I don't. Yeah, no. And I also would feel less safe walking in the streets. Mm. Uh, yeah. I've, have you have you ever been been to the U.S.? Yes, I did. Where whereabouts? Uh, Palm Springs in New York. Okay, I've been to New York. It's an interesting city. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, a little different than what the movies, you know, per portray it as. Yeah, well, I was used to seeing uh, New York is gritty in the movies, but it's actually very clean and very, they, they yeah, they clean it up very well. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so I went only in those two places and they were, like, they are quite safe places, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but well, then again, I had... New York right now is not that safe. Well, yeah, <laughs> they're they're having some some issues. Like in the last seven days, they've had seventy five people injured in fifty five shootings. Jesus. So like it is it is crazy. Again, like those aren't legal guns shooting people. <laughs> those are those are mostly you know gangsters like warring for territory. Okay, well, um, again, I just don't. I just wouldn't feel safe myself to mm. live in in a country with a gun mentality mm. already and walking in the streets in a city where I know that everybody can have one and okay. I don't know I do I'm at I do trust people but not so much <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's, uh, that's fair I wouldn't, um, and then you have you have criminality problems everywhere like mm. but if everybody everybody can have access to it then I just don't think it would I would feel safe. Mm. Well, excuse me. Sorry. Excuse me. I'm I'm asking uh, people what they think about the liberal gun ban that happened on May first. Do you have any comments? Are you aware that happened? No, I don't really know anything about it. Okay, so it was after the Nova Nova Scotia shooting, right? So yeah. that was like horrific tragedy happened April 18th and 19th. Mm -hmm. Then ten days later, the liberals banned like uh you know the assault rifles and the you know assault style weapons like ar-15s those those kinds of things okay so um but it came out like a few weeks after that that the uh nova nova scotia shooter had like he acquired all his uh firearms illegally like okay. they were smuggled from the usa yeah so it, do you feel like a gun a gun ban on the, on, on those kinds of weapons would have any effect on smuggled weapons? I don't know if I know enough about the situation okay. to really say anything, mm. if I'm being honest. Oh, that's, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not looking for any particular comment, I'm just sort of engaging in, you yeah, know, no. in, 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 in comments, or uh, uh, conversation, if you will. Yeah, so, no, that's awesome. Um, basically, this guy acquired all these illegal weapons. He was also a domestic abuser, which is really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And he had domestic reports from like 2010 onward, at least three of them. And during those domestic uh, reports, it was reported he may have illegal firearms to police and the police didn't act on it. They didn't get a search warrant. They didn't check him. Okay. So it's like they were kind of aware, but they never followed up on it. Yeah. And then obviously something happened. He snapped and then 20, 22 people died. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a little bit sketchy when, with, with all that. So mm -hmm. um, basically the whole thinking of the, um, the pro-gun side is that there, you know, those guns were already illegal. 
in the eyes of the law of Canada because they were brought across the border. They were he didn't have a gun license, and then he shot a bunch of people. So what is a what is more laws going to do to stop that? Okay. So that's basically the argument of the pro pro gun side and the anti gun side. It's basically saying, well, less guns is better. We'll just ban all the guns, even if they're legal, and they've been approved by the RCMP previously. That's that's the that's the anti gun side. Okay, I see. So, I feel like I need to do my own research. That's good. But yeah, it's good to hear about. I'll I'll look into that. Excuse me. I'm I'm asking people what they think about the liberal gun ban on from May 1st and the Nova Nova Scotia shooter yeah. and what they and and what they think about that. Um I think if you go to the right channels, you definitely should be able to own a gun. Mm. Because if someone breaks into your home and you have no gun and the guy does have a gun, then what are you supposed to do? Exactly, because they, they found out that the Nova Scotia shooter had four illegal guns acquired from the USA. Okay. So they weren't subject to the laws of Canada. So so the legislation passed 10 days later really wouldn't have changed the that outcome. That wouldn't have affected it. No. Yeah, if they're available illegally, mm -hmm. what's to stop someone just buying them illegally? Exactly. I so, mean, there are homeless people in Vancouver here that have guns. Like in Oppen Oppenheimer Park, when they took over that park, they yeah. found a bunch of illegal actual guns that homeless people had. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's so, like, you can't stop homeless people from having guns. What are you going to do? Why should you stop the regular person? Yeah, especially if they voluntarily give up their in information to police saying, here I am, yeah. here I've done the safety course, I've done you yeah. know all this stuff, I don't have a criminal... Yeah, I think you should be, if you do go through the right courses, get a license, you know, you have a background check, I absolutely think you should be allowed to own a gun. Mm, but yeah. the it's, liberal government is saying everyone is now safer for them passing this law. Uh, it doesn't make sense. People can still get guns, legally or illegally. Mm. So if you just limit, if you stop more people legally getting guns, it doesn't necessarily decrease the amount of people illegally getting them. Right. It's all... Well, the anti-gun side of that would be saying that less guns is always a good thing. Yeah, but they're already out there. So, if the guns are already out there, you're not going to be able to get... How many guns are in North America alone? 300, 400 million? Well, I think there's at least 400 million in the U.S. alone. And yeah. I think there's another maybe 30 or 40 million in Canada. So, there's more guns than people. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> the guns are already there. So, if you can't legally acquire one but they're already out there and the only means to get them is illegally now mm. and if people who are illegally getting guns is usually not for you know protection purposes it's usually to commit crimes so well in in canada it's like a little bit tricky because you aren't allowed to carry guns for self-defense yeah so like there's no canadians here like for example today in the square which can legally carry a gun yeah um and in like you can kind of use them defensively but only if you're like happen to have it available if you're like you're at your house yeah and you hear someone trying to kick in kick in your door and you have enough time to actually get it out of the safe get it out of the safe and lock it yeah. right so there's a bunch of things that need to happen but before you get out to actually get right to, yeah so yeah well I'm, I'm originally from ireland and we like this whole gun culture that is in the north america is completely new to me mm -hmm. um in Ireland, we didn't really, never been around guns if it wasn't for hunting. Mm. But uh, I've noticed over here, like, fire a gun, it's it's not, it's not that uncommon. Like, it's it's it's, something that's it's, it's fairly. I mean, so, yeah. Canada's pretty pretty big, especially if you live up north. Most people do have yeah. some kind of gun, because yeah, you know there's bears and cougars and all that kind of stuff. Wolves. Yeah, my wife is from Saskatchewan mm. originally, and yeah, all of her friends they all have guns for hunting and stuff like that but yeah I still see nothing wrong with it. if you leave me acquire one then why go through the right channels you have a license it's you're trained to use one I don't think it shouldn't be the type of gun yeah I don't think maybe not a massive you know assault well, rifle or something but it's well, in Canada, you're not allowed to have like a fully automatic gun. So those yeah. guns were banned in the 70s. Yeah. So the only sense. guns in Canada you can use are semi-automatics or bolt actions, basically. Yeah. So that's basically it. So like, you know, um, you know how they look, at, at least in the pro-gun side, shouldn't matter. Yeah. If they function as a one, one, one pull per, per, per bullet, bullet yeah. then 
it's kind of irrelevant how it looks. Because, mm. you know, a bullet is a bullet is a bullet kind of. Firewall comes out, really. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's basically it. I mean, I was, do you have any final thoughts or maybe, like, you know, thoughts to Canadians who, you know, may support a, or don't don't support a band like this? Um, I guess it kind of it's really more of a cultural thing that I've noticed. Is that if you were growing up around a lot of guns, you're trained to use one, and it's I think it's more people who haven't been around guns all their life and to see a gun as a bad thing straight away are more supportive of the ban. That's what I've noticed. But if you've grown up around guns, you know how to use one, you know how to properly store it and use it safely, then I find that they're more inclined to want to keep their gun regs, which I'm all for. If you know how to use one and you know how to use it safely, by all means, you should be able to have it. Okay. All right, yeah, I, I appreciate it very, very much. I run a YouTube channel it's called Glen Scope, G L E N N, scope as in like a spotting scope. And uh, I'll probably post something a little bit about this interview. Yeah. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. No problem at all. Thanks.